Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Aaron Vickmeyer. Vickmeyer. I'm the Director of Support Services for the Seneca Waterways Council. Um, with me tonight, I've got uh, Don DeClerc and uh, Matt Thurston. Don is going to be our Camp Director at uh, Mass Sweepy this summer, and Matt is going to be our Program Director. Um, we're happy to have you join us. Uh, we're excited to have this possibility um, and opportunity to provide a summer camp option uh, for your troops within Leather Stockings Council. And we really look forward to serving many of you. Uh, I know we do have quite a few troops that come up and stay with us already, but we're looking forward to serving more of you this summer. We do have lots of room. I've got a quick slideshow I'm just gonna share along with some videos uh, to give you a little bit more of information about, uh, about Mass Weepy Scout Camps and some of the operations that we have. Uh, and then we'll jump into some program specifics with Matt and Don. And then at the end, we'll open it up for some uh, questions. Uh, and if any of you already have been staying at Mass Weepy, uh, welcome some, uh, some you know, feedback and testimonials uh, to let others know that um, we're a very welcoming group of people and we love to have more scouts having fun at camp. So I'll just jump through the slideshow uh, here. Uh, my, my name again, Aaron Vickmeyer. Uh, all of our program and operations uh, at our three properties that were on that front picture can actually be utilized all year round. Uh, we do have winter camping cabins available at all three of our properties, Mass Weepy Scout Reservation in Tupper Lake, uh, Camp Babcock Covey in Ovid, New York, and uh, J. Warren Cutler Scout Reservation in Naples, New York. Lots of heated buildings for winter camping lots of campsites available for, for you know, spring, summer, and fall. We do have five campsites at each property that is completely free for troop rental or pack rental uh, for in-council and out-of-council use. Um, so as a Leather Stockings Council uh, unit, if you're looking for some place to go camping uh, during the spring, during the fall, or even uh, winter camping, uh, if you're looking to do some tent winter camping, we are available for you to utilize as well. Uh, through the partnership, we're happy to have you utilize those when you want to jump in and look at it. You can actually call the office as well uh, and just say we'd like to check out one of the free tent camping sites and uh, Leanne in the office can help you get registered up for that. Um, summer camp registration is open now. We do have campsites available at Mass Weepy. There is a way where you can um, upload your roster into the system for out of council units. Obviously, it's a lot easier to hand enter your rosters. Um, so, but if you can email us a copy of your roster as well ahead of time, that way we can have the uh, council office match up all your, your registration to know that everybody that's coming is a registered member of the Boy Scouts. So that's important for us uh, from a youth protection standpoint. There are some non-refundable deposits. The $100 site deposited is non-refundable. Um, there is a process uh, for your full payment if you let us know ahead of time. Uh, for a refund, if something happens, medical uh, reasons is, a, is one of the main reasons we do give out full refunds for scouts that can't make it to camp. Uh, again, adult leaders, we require adult leaders to be registered members of the Boy Scouts of America, have valid member ID, and of course have youth protection training. If a scout signs up for a second session of camp, so if your troop is coming up to camp and they wanna come back for more, uh, the cost for camp is $300 per session. So 445 for a regular cost or the early bird cost, uh, 495 uh, with our $50 late fee if you pay after March 18th. Uh, but if your scout signs up for a second week to come back to Mass Weepy, they can attend for $300. Um, there are camperships available. Uh, Tom did share with me the, uh, the policy that's written up on the campership program for Leather Stockings Council. I did put that in here. It looks like eligibility applications are due February 15th through April 15th. As you apply for those, uh, and they'll be awarded May 1st with that in mind. Uh, if you know you've got a campership coming and you've applied for it, I will be in communication with Tom regarding those as well. So if he lets me know you have a campership coming instead of having to worry about cutting a check to the troop, we can work with him so he can just have one, one check come to us to take care of all your uh, campership needs that are coming to Mass Weepy. And that's not a problem for us to handle. If that saves you paperwork and time. We're happy to help with that as well. Uh, the refund policy there, again, medical issues, summer school, ex extreme family emergencies, that type of stuff, we're more than happy to work with you. Just let us know ahead of time, ideally, you know, 60, 60 days, 30 days is better, uh, but refunds or requests do have to come in by June 30th for us to be able to issue those out. Uh, where you can find all our information and forms, when Matt jumps over to our website, you'll see 
uh, that down at the bottom here, there's a, a listing of attachments. Uh, that's where all of our forms can be found, our food accommodation uh, request form. So if you have scouts that have dietary restrictions or special dietary needs, uh, you can fill that form out. It does get sent to our food service partners. Uh, we utilize Sodexo for food service at the dining hall. And as soon as they get that information, they'll start to a communication dialogue with you to be able to uh, make sure that scout is getting the appropriate food during the week. We do not want any of our scouts to go hungry and they do a good job of making sure that everybody gets what they need when they let us know. So help us out and make sure those scouts that do have dietary restrictions or dietary needs, let's, let us know. Directions to camp can be found there as well as the program guide and the, the updated leaders guide. Uh, the swim check guide as well, our summer swim check. You can do swim checks uh, prior to coming to camp. Uh, but the aquatic staff does reserve the right to uh, have the scouts retake it if it seems they are struggling swimming in Lake uh, Massweepie Lake. Jumping ahead, plan ahead, medical forms. There was a link there for the current BSA medical form posted. Make sure you remind your scouts to get their medical forms taken care of early. Parts A, B, and C are required for scouts BSA resident camp. And of course, if there is a medication uh, usage, there is a New York state law medical medication form that we have on our website as well that we are required to ask you to have the parents fill out so we can help your scouts receive the medications they need while they're at camp. We do have CIT opportunities as well as camp staff opportunities and I know Matt will talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, if you have scouts that are looking to become counselors in training, we would love to have them apply to be a part of that program. Uh, they have to be at least 14 years of age or older to apply, and there is a small fee for them to come to camp to be a CIT with us. Um, but we do are we are indeed looking for additional staff as well as CITs for this summer. We do have family camping opportunities. Massweepy wants to be your one-stop shop for uh, camping this summer. Um, we do have fam uh, Top Shot program down at Camp Babcock Hovey where we're going to do some uh, shooting competitions. Uh, but Massweepy has a family camp. Uh, we run family camp sessions June 30th through August 14th at Camp Mountaineer. Uh, camp uh, Massweepy or Massweepy Scout Camps is broken up into three properties. Pioneer is our primary uh, resident camp for Scouts BSA. Mountaineer is our family camp where we have uh, at least six RV sites, four large group sites, and multiple tent camping sites uh, available on the property. So if you are looking at having families come up to camp, while your scouts are on the other side of the property or the other side of the lake having a scouts BSA resident camp experience, we can provide that option for you. We also have an end of season summer uh, family camp session that runs August 15th through September 6th. Great opportunity for you to finish out the end of the summer and enjoy some of the, the great uh, North Woods and, uh, and all that Massweepy has to offer. So we've got lots of great opportunities there. And if that's something you are interested in, definitely just shoot us an email at camping at SenecaWaterways.org and we can provide that information. We have high adventure treks and opportunities as well. Ian Craig is our summer camp trek director. Uh, we do three days and six day treks. I've got a quick little video right before I turn it over to Matt that we help uh, troops get out there and have a great experience on the trek trails. Uh, so great opportunity there. We do some year-round programs. And Don, would you like to speak to the Mass Weepy Outdoor Challenge and what that's involved? Gives me a second to take a drink and catch my breath. Yeah, so uh, we have two out, um, what we call mock weekends, Mass Weepy Outdoor um, Challenges. One is Columbus Day and the other one is Martin Luther King weekend where we do all sorts of various things at camp. We run a program, we feed you, uh, you come up. Uh, the October one, we can take a lot more folks. The one in January, we can, we're limited to 65 participants due to the fact that um, not everybody wants to sleep at minus 25 degrees outside in a tent. So we try to get uh, beds inside where it's warm. Um, the one in Columbus Day, we've done high peak hikes to uh, Adirondack scavenger hunts. Um, the MLK weekend, we usually try to do an ice fishing, uh, cross country skiing, snowshoeing, building Quincy's. Um, so we have all sorts of opportunities for you to take advantage of, not just during the summertime at Massawebe. Thanks, Don. Of course, the Massawebe Scout Camps, uh, we've got a lot of great program. Again, we've got Don and Matt here to talk about that. 
Um, we're happy to come talk to your troop about summer camp programs. I've got two quick little videos I'll share, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Matt so he can talk a little bit more about the specifics of Mass VP summer program. Well, we do have some work weekends. If your scouts would love to come up before the season starts and help us get camp ready, uh, Beaver weekend, June 4th through the 6th is at Mass VP where we've got opportunities for scouts to come up, do some tent camping, and we do have some free meals there and free camping as well. So we'd love to see your troops come up and help us with that. Adirondack Treks at Massawipi Scout Camps is a full-service Scouts BSA High Adventure program located in the majestic Adirondack State Park of New York. Located within a day's drive of most East Coast states and areas in the Midwest such as Chicago, our six million acre state forest offers the ideal high adventure opportunity for scouting units of all ability levels. Imagine waking up in a lakeside campsite to the sound of calling loons, sharing stories around the crackling campfire from the quintessential Adirondack lean-to reeling in your first or tenth rook trout, or feeling the rush of fresh air from the top of a mountain as you gaze over the trails and lakes you crossed during your adventure. Our multi-day adventure programming and scheduling is flexible based upon the time your group is able to commit and the goals participants establish in partnership with our program leadership. Adventure experiences within the Adirondack Park include, but are not limited to, canoeing, backpacking, scaling mountaintops, mountain biking, fishing, orienteering, select merit badge achievement, leadership, teamwork, and general outdoor skills development. A list of possible adventures with route maps can be found on our website, SenecaWaterways.org slash Massaweepy hyphen Adirondack hyphen Treks. We certainly aren't limited to that list though. Please contact us to customize an adventure. Each trek is fully inclusive of all food, lodging, group equipment, transportation to and from the trailheads, and an Adirondack Voyager trainer for the duration of your stay with us. Most crews need only bring their personal gear and backpacks with them from home. The Adirondack Voyager assigned to each crew is a fully trained and certified Scouts BSA Trek leader who will work with the Scouts and each crew to set trip and daily goals, develop teamwork and leadership skills, reflect upon the challenges and accomplishments each day, and ensure the overall health and safety of the crew for the duration of a trek. We truly do want to see all Scouts develop the confidence and skills to tackle leadership and outdoor challenges of all shapes and sizes. Our typical summer programming runs from the first week of July for six weeks into the second week of August, with most treks departing on Sundays from camp returning Friday midday. Crews typically travel to and from Massawipi on Saturdays for the treks program. Reservations are accepted on a rolling first-come, first-served basis starting in November annually, and can be secured with a deposit similar to the cost of one participant. Each trek is priced per person regardless of age. Current maximum group size per trek is set at seven from any given unit. But we do ask that you contact us for options if you have more scouts and adults interested. Minimum participant age level is 13 by January 1 of the participating year. For adventures inclusive of water activities, all participants must pass the swimmer's test prior to trek departure. If you think that a challenging high adventure experience in the Adirondack Mountains of New York might be what your group is looking for this summer, please don't hesitate to reach out to us via email at treks at SenecaWaterways.org. Our team is ready and waiting to answer any and all questions that you might have. We look forward to welcoming your crew at Massawipi Scout Camps in the Adirondack Park of New York State this coming summer. Well, we won't actually have breakout rooms since we're uh, just one group here tonight. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Matt so he can talk a little bit about specific programs. Yeah, thanks so much, Aaron. Um, 
So yeah, thanks for having us here tonight, guys. Uh, very excited to you know tell you guys a little bit about what we do up at camp each summer. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm the program director at MassWeepy. This is my second year uh, in the role. I've been working at camp for, I think, six years now. Um, so I'm very, very passionate about, uh, you know, giving everybody the best experience when they come up to camp. Um, so I'm going to go through our program guide a little bit, talk about our different program areas, the specific things we have on offer um, in terms of merit badges and different activities, uh, you know, while you're at camp. Um, if you guys have questions about treks, uh, Don will probably be able to help you guys out with that a little bit more. He's very connected with the trek side of the operation, um, but that's also a really great opportunity to get up um, to the Adirondacks and have a good uh, scouting experience over the summer. Um, so I'm going to start by just going through the program guide a little bit, some of the different things we have to offer. Um, and uh, I'll tell you guys a little bit about kind of where to find different information uh, about program and things going on in camp as well. Um, this is our 2022 program guide. Um, so first off, I'm going to talk a little bit about open program. Um, I don't know what camps you guys have been at in the past. Um, our open program uh, works a little bit differently than some other scout camps in that we have every program offering a different activity each day. Um, and we have two sessions that they do that offering each day. Um, and then all the scouts in your unit can choose where they want to go. Um, usually taking a buddy um, and go out to the different areas. Um, so we don't assign your uh, unit to do kind of free time activities at areas um, and you don't necessarily rotate to the different areas throughout the week. You get that kind of opportunity to go wherever you wanna go um, based on our supplementary schedule, which shows all the activities we're running during those free times. Um, so our open program is really, I think one of the strongest things we have um, in terms of how we kind of deliver the uh, extracurricular activities at camp. Um, and it's a really, really great way to kind of have scouts try different experiences, maybe try out things that they may want to go um, to do a merit badge for in the future. Um, a lot of good, uh, you know, fun to be had there. Um, so this says a little bit about our uh, most recent uh, new merit badge offerings. Um, in the past few years, we've added citizenship in the nation, um, sign signals and codes, or, uh, exploration, animation, and archaeology to our uh, merit badge list. Um, if you'd like a full merit badge list, we have that available as well, but those are kind of our newest things um, over the past few years. Um, so area to area staples, um, we have uh, kind of all the classics. We have a beautiful waterfront um, with a variety of boating activities, um, and then of course swimming and life-saving as well. Um, and we have a lot of fun um, open program activities out around our um, waterfront, which is around the, our private lake, Lake Massaweepi. Um, and some of those activities also get out with boating activities on some of the other ponds around the property. Um, so there's a lot of different boating opportunities there um, in variety of, uh, of paddle craft like canoes and kayaks. And then of course we have some uh, small sailboats um, and uh, paddle boards as well. Um, we offer merit badges and uh, all of those different activities. Um, and like I said, some of my favorite stuff at the waterfront is during those open program activities. We have different, uh, you know, boating races, other stuff like that, a lot of fun stuff um, to be had down there. Um, we have all the kind of staple um, econ badges available at camp. Um, and then we have a variety of kind of fun integrations as well as a uh, requirement of focused open program activities there. Um, and we have a variety of badges that are available in all of our areas, but especially at areas with a lot of uh, variety like econ, where if we don't teach it during a merit badge session, um, we may teach it either during a scheduled open program activity or your scout can go in um, and ask to kind of audit that class during uh, their um, open program time. Um, and that's kind of by availability, by appointment, uh, but those kind of flexible options are always there for our open times. Um, and yeah, some of our staple open programs um, at Econ um, are our Loon Canoe, um, our Plant and Animal Hike, our Alien Awareness Night is very popular. Um, and then we have uh, Order of the Panda is kind of a recognition for doing a lot of activities at our Econ area. We always like to have fun little uh, kind of bits and things like that to get the kids excited about camp. Um, Coping climbing, I think, is one of our strongest areas um, in camp in that we have a full cope course in addition to our 30-foot uh, climbing wall. Um, we have a zip line there. We have a high beam, um, a variety of other kind of high element activities, um, and then also a variety of low element activities that might be um, right off the ground or uh, 
you know, up to six or so feet off the ground where the kids aren't on belay, um, but they are doing kind of uh, activities that help them build up those skills to be uh, kind of safe, um, up elevated on some of those other elements. And they also build kind of team building skills through those activities. Um, our COPE program is offered once a day and we offer climbing twice a day, um, as well as having an open program for each. Um, so there's a lot of variety there. Um, and scouts really enjoy the COPE program, uh, which is can be a scheduled uh, um, kind of merit badge focused activity um, throughout the day. Um, Handicraft is one of my personal favorites. I was a director there uh, my second year at camp. Um, we have a variety of arts focused badges there as well as some kind of citizenship focused badges. So that's where we host our archeology span and our citizenship of the nation. Um, and then we have all the kind of staples like uh, space exploration, wood carving, um, art, basketry, Indian lore, leatherwork. Um, those are kind of the staples that are always there at Handicraft. So, um, and then they also have a wide variety of open program activities um, and several uh, merit badges that they teach during open program. Okay. Um, Trailblazers is our first year camper program. Um, we actually have that program a little bit under review with some scout masters right now to try and kind of focus what requirements we uh, wanna hyper focus on. So you'll see the specific requirements covered this year are not listed yet, um, but they will be uh, by the time we have merit badge registration going. Um, so uh, it's a first year camper program, which means it kind of has two purposes, one of which is to um, kind of get kids integrated to camp and uh, kind of have a grounding um, kind of place with other scouts their age um, for their first week at camp. You know, many first year scouts will have that first year at camp or first week at camp um, be the first time they've been alone for that long. Um, so it's very important for that reason. And then of course, we also have a variety of um, tenderfoot through first class requirements um, available um, as well. Um, and those are kind of spread out throughout our schedule classes. And then they also offer some open program activities um, for things that they can't fit into class time, um, but that are requirement focused. Um, like we have an aquatic stay hosted by Trailblazers for some of those aquatics requirements, um, but it's facilitated down at the waterfront. We have a few others like that that are uh, kind of cooperative between different program areas um, to offer those programs. Um, all right, so sports and mountain biking, we have uh, kind of the basic uh, sports related badges, um, athletics, personal fitness, sports. Um, and then we have, uh, you know, fun game, uh, you know, uh, active activities for open program throughout the week, um, as well as some things that scouts can go in um, and just kind of take something out of the shed if they want to use it, uh, you know, during their time uh, for that open program. Um, we also have a fleet of bikes that are available to be rented out during our open programs um, and that are used kind of for other programs that are scheduled throughout the week. Um, so we have a lot of good opportunities there. Um, and we did get a few of those uh, fat tire bikes in the past few years that have been a lot, a lot of fun for, uh, for scouts to play around on. Um, Scoutcraft, I think, is kind of the heart of a scout camp. It has uh, kind of all those, uh, you know, focus scout related skill badges. Um, and we've got them all at camp. Um, we also have a tomahawk range at our scout craft. Um, we have a variety of kind of fire focused things. We have a lot of, uh, we've done things like uh, um, Dutch oven cooking competitions. Um, some of the lashing stuff that goes on at scout craft is probably some of the um, biggest stuff that you see kind of out around camp. Um, so we have a lot of fun there. And we also have a variety of uh, kind of Again, audit training related things like if a scout isn't in trailblazers but needs some training in outdoor ethics or um, they need their totem chip or their fireman chip, then we offer all that during uh, scout craft open program activities as well. Um, I think our shooting, we're, our shooting sports ranges are uh, really kind of the jewel that we have up at camp. Um, they're all very well developed, um, you know, good spaces. Um, we've had very strong staff there in the past as well. Um, so we have our rifle range, our shotgun range, um, and our archery range, um, which again, we have merit badges throughout the day. Um, so you can, you know, take a merit badge for a full week, or you can just, uh, you know, go a few times during open program if you want to uh, practice your aim. Um, the firearms are 12 plus, but we do have some BB, BB guns that we take out um, sometimes during open program. If we have some scouts that would like to use those that aren't uh, 12 yet to use our uh, 22 rifles. Um, and we have a variety of compound and recurve bows at our archery range. Um, so there's a lot of kind of variety there uh, 
to have a good introduction uh, for shooting sports. I'm definitely of the mind that uh, one of the best places that uh, folks can kind of learn about uh, shooting and using firearms the first time is at camp. And I learned my first time shooting at summer camp. So, uh, you know, always encourage people to get uh, involved there. Um, so that is the overall list of our program areas. Um, we have some um, extra kind of special programs offered throughout the week um, that are not through our normal programs, um, our normal program areas. Um, so one of the ones that we're most proud of is our Bark Eater program, which is a uh, kind of recognition program for repeat campers. Um, and there's some uh, kind of, uh, there's some kind of achievement things to do throughout the week. And then uh, scouts get to partic participate in a ceremony at the end of the week to be kind of recognized for the things that they've done. Um, so they involve service. Um, it involves learning something about the Adirondacks or camp. Um, and then it also involves a specific activity that they have to do that's usually about getting them out on the property, um, getting them active or getting them to learn something about kind of the history or ecology of the, um, the Adirondacks. Um, so it's a very interesting program. I have a list of some of our programs that um, go through it there. Um, lumberjack games is one of our most popular activities. We have a two-man saw race. We have an ax chop, um, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, we have a kind of guided uh, canoe carry um, race that we do um, for these activities. Um, we also have a loon canoe, which is uh, one of my favorites. And uh, most times people actually get to um, see or at the very least hear a loon on their loon canoe. Um, so folks always enjoy that quite a bit. Um, Alrighty, so Mountain Fox um, is actually not so much under my purview because it's run through our Trek program. Um, there's a lot of very, uh, you know, cool stuff to say about it, but I don't know, Don, would you like to share anything about Mountain Fox? Sure. So Mountain Fox is a program for uh, scouts that have been there, done that, um, and a way to get them to keep coming um, is our Trek program and our Mountain Fox. So Mountain Fox, um, you sign up for it just like on, on the merit badge, um, like any merit badge. And then on Monday morning at nine o'clock, they meet with the Mountain Fox director and as a group. So there'll be scouts from different scout troops. Um, as a group, you decide what, uh, what you're gonna do for that week, what are the goals for that week. Um, and we hike mountains, we canoe, we learn how to cook with fry bakes we, over an open fire, we, with twiggy fires, we bake, uh, orienteering. So it's the myriad of different things that we try to get the scouts um, so that they have a heck of a lot of fun, but at the same time learn an awful lot um, so that they can go to the next phase, which would be going on a trek out in the middle of nowhere. Um, the nice thing with Mountain Fox is the kids or the scouts get to come home back to camp uh, most nights. There may be one or two overnights, but they come back and can be with the troop uh, for dinner, uh, for campfires and all that kind of stuff. So that in a nutshell is what Mountain Fox is. Awesome. Thanks, Don. Um, and yeah, so it, and I like what Don said that, yeah, you kind of get your own experience, but you still get to have the in-camp experience as well. Um, which is one of the, I think, the big benefits of that program. Um, we also have a very good outpost program. Um, I didn't mention earlier, we, uh, our camp, um, Camp Pioneer, which is where our resident camp is based, um, is probably about a 300-acre uh, kind of um, organization where we organize all of our uh, um, program areas and campsites. Um, but our property is a 3,600-acre um, property with an easement with New York State. So it's all kind of untouched. Um, and we have nine different ponds that are out around the property. Um, and we have, I believe, 20, 22 outposts um, on different ponds, on different kind of select points. Um, some of them have some significance as to, you know, um, why it was there for some history with, with camp. Um, so our outpost program basically lets the troop go out and run an outpost by themselves if they'd like to, um, you know, any night during the week when they would like to. So if you know, you have some younger scouts and you want to maybe ramp them up to some of those bigger um, high adventure experiences. Um, there's a really good opportunity to kind of choose a time that works for you. Um, you speak with our, uh, with our treks and they kind of make sure that you're ready to go. They can help you out with some trail food. Um, 
but there's a lot of different places to go. And we always, different staff feel very strongly about different outposts. So we'll make sure to give you a really good recommendation if you're trying to decide when you get to camp. Um, so uh, definitely suggest taking part in that. It's a really good opportunity. And you can even do some maybe before or after your week at camp um, if you coordinate with us to make that happen. Um, so uh, definitely something to think of. If you are planning to outpost, you should bring your own tents um, and basic equipment. Um, our treks can help with things like, uh, you know, pocket rockets, stoves, um, trek food, but uh, kind of the basic stuff is stuff that you'll have to have uh, to do that. Um, Aaron mentioned before, but we are still hiring for our staff um, and we're seeking new CITs for this year. Um, we are even seeking some area managers still. We have most of those areas filled, but if you have any older scouts you think might be interested, um, please feel free to give them our contact info um, and we'll get them in for some interviews. Excuse me. Um, and our CIT program is a really good opportunity. Um, we've even had CITs before that it was their first year at camp. Um, you know, that's not generally what happens, but they, uh, you know, we've had that and it's uh, worked out very, very well. Um, so it's a $75 to participate in the program. Um, and it's a three week experience, um, which is split up between kind of a CIT patrol focused development activities, um, and then getting out and kind of learning about different areas. Um, and then your third week, you really get to, uh, you kind of get assigned, um, to an area that you were interested in. I mean, you stick in that for the whole week um, and work and uh, usually co-teach a merit badge. Um, so a lot of good opportunities there. Um, you know, if you guys can't get into an NLT program, but you want your scout to have a leadership experience, would highly suggest that. Um, all righty. Um, so we talked about the Trek Center. Um, let's see if there's anything else in there. Family camping. Um, if you guys have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to um, camping folks at SWC. They'll help you out with any of the kind of off-season camping stuff. Um, but I always go up to camp in the off-season because it's uh, I like to see it in every season. Um, Alrighty, so that's our program guide. Um, I don't know, do we want to open if people have any questions program related and then we can go to the registration page to finish out? Yeah, sure. let's open it up for questions. We talked a lot. <laughs> or you guys talked a lot. Or man, a few words, Don. You guys have any questions so far? Should be able to unmute. Doesn't look like we have any questions. All righty. Um, so I'll go over to our registration page to show and then we can maybe stop once more at the end. Yep. All right. Um, all righty, um, am I sharing again? Yes. Okay. Um, so this is the homepage for Seneca Waterways. Wanted to go here to make sure you guys kind of knew the right uh, route to take to get to our registration page. Um, so this is just SenecaWaterways.org. Um, you want to go to uh, outdoors in the drop bar, Massawipi Scout Camps, um, and then Camp Pioneer at Massawipi. Um, and actually, if you're interested in treks, you want to go right to the bottom of this drop tag to Massawipi Adirondack Treks. Or it's being advertised right now, so you can just click the big uh, sliding thing right here. Um, so outdoors, Massawipi Scout Camps, Camp My Pioneer at Massawipi. Um, then 2022 summer camp registration. Um, and then what you're gonna wanna do um, is go right over to the right side here. Um, and you can see basically any of the sessions that still have availability. Um, you go right in um, and then it's going to uh, ask you either to log in um, and then you reserve your campsite and start putting in some information. Once you put your information in, if you're kind of not ready to finalize your registration, you can uh, change all that um, towards the end. Um, and if it's your first time using this registration system, um, we posted some videos on Facebook this week um, that walk through how to use the system, change information about your scouts, um, make payments, register for merit badges, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
And then the last thing you're going to want to see is this right down here. Um, I think Aaron pointed it out before, um, but this is where all of our paperwork about camp is. Um, med forms, additional medical paperwork, uh, food needs, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's also got our program guide, which I just went through. So you can go and look through any of that information if you'd like to kind of look more at it. Um, we also have our leader's guide um, up right here um, that I just over hovered over. And that has stuff about uh, payment schedules, general policy, um, things around arrival at camp if you have any questions, um, pretty much any question that you could ask. It's even got, I think, a packing list that you can provide to your scouts. Um, it's got some maps, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's your kind of, those two are your one-stop shop if you're not sure about something. Um, there are two documents that if you guys do decide to sign up, um, will end up being here, um, which includes our um, merit badge schedule for this summer, as well as our prerequisite guide for, for this summer. Um, so those will go up um, towards the end of February, um, about a month before our merit badge registration, um, but that'll be where you find all that kind of stuff. Um, with that, I think that might be kind of the last stuff I have, Aaron. Um, and then once you, sorry, once you register, um, some people will have trouble finding it. Um, you get back into your registration with this lookup tab right up here. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions about that one in the past. So one of the nice features we do have with the black pug system, if you're not familiar with it, is that other option right there that says parent portal. Once you get into the system and you load in your scouts names, uh, you can actually assign a ID number, oops, uh, an alternate ID number and a password. Uh, you'll be able to create a, a PDF or an Excel spreadsheet that you can share with the families that register uh, or are going to be registering. And you actually share that information with those families and then they can make their summer camp payments directly into the Black Bug system. So from a, a troop treasurer perspective, it's kind of the best opportunity there where you can hand a, a, a little slip of paper and say, okay, now you pay the 445 uh, for your scout. And uh, you can actually track it from your end as the leader and their leader registration uh, system side of it to see if they've made their payments. Uh, but you don't have to worry about going around and collecting the fees up from the families. Uh, they can put it on their credit card and pay us directly, which is a nice option that way. Uh, we do yeah, have... Yeah, go ahead, I was Matt. just going to say most of our larger units use that feature, um, and you can also use it to register for merit badges. So as unit leaders, you can provide the information about merit badge registration to your scout or to your parents, and then they can go in and register the scouts, especially if you're a larger unit. It's a huge, huge advantage. And with that, um, you know, we'll open it up to your questions. Or if anybody's got anything, uh, if they've stayed at Mass Sweepy before, we'd love to hear from you. Yes, David. Good evening. Thanks for a great program. Um, I guess a couple of questions. Uh, how bad are the black flies? <laughs> Being, having been to Cedarlands. <laughs> well, I can answer that. By the time you guys get there, if you're there week one, um, they're still going to be kicking around a little bit, but not much longer after that. Okay. The longer you go into the summer, the mosquitoes will come out. Um, and the no seams, but the black flies are usually dead by then. And generally, okay. at the start of the summer, it's more horse flies than black flies, I think. Um, okay. They're a little bit worse, but yeah. Okay. They um, make great bait for the fish. That's, that's right. <laughs> um, do you Are the scouts supposed to pre register for merit badges, or is, can they do that once they get up there? Yeah. So our uh, registration day is going to be March 31st this year. Mm -hmm. um, so they can go in through that online system. Um, and like I said, there's a video up on kind of how that whole process works. Um, and they can register that way. Um, and then we also have an ad drop session um, on the day that folks arrive um, where our staff sit down with unit leaders and you guys can make any changes to add or drop classes to their schedule. Um, so it, it's possible for scouts to show up without any merit badges registered mm -hmm. um, and get into stuff. but. Um, especially our busy weeks, people like to go ahead of time because they really want to get into busier stuff like rifle and shotgun, um, and they want to kind of secure their spot. 
you. Yeah, I would suggest that if you have the opportunity to sign up before, don't wait to camp because it'll it, that night, the America drop ad night. I mean, it's kind of a zoo. So um, <laughs> it's easier to set it up and have it done before you even get there and have it all printed out so you know where your scouts are going to be at all times. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I know we do have uh, we do have eight uh, eight troops already coming from Leather Stockings Council, um, and and you can see on the Camp Matrix side of things if you're looking to see what uh, what troops are already attending uh, summer camp. It's kind of a nice feature in the whole list. I'll just jump back to it uh, quickly here. Uh, at the bottom of the registration page, you can see the campsites with their capacity. They're broken up into different uh, sections. So some campsites, you'll see there's a Blue Mountain Site 1, Blue Mountain Site 2. That's really all one campsite. Um, but there, you'll see the names of the, uh, or the numbers of the units and then the little abbreviations behind it that indicate which troops are in there. So like uh, Troop 48, uh, Longhouse is right there, uh, and so on and so forth. So you can kind of Kind of jump in there and take a look. Uh, if you're wondering how you're going to get all your scouts to camp, you may find a, a troop that's already coming up uh, from your council that you could uh, share some of those responsibilities with. Or if um, you see the coloration of the troops uh, as well in their campsites, uh, there's a nice little uh, guide at the bottom that indicates that if there's a, a lighter color, the camp still has the campsite still has some room uh, for additional capacity. And that way, if you're looking at having a small troop come to summer camp and you might need to pair up with somebody else, uh, there are those options there uh, where we can help you uh, link up with those troops that already have reservations in a site where you might be able to, to share a campsite with them. Uh, and of course, all the green uh, information there or green spots that show there is nobody booked in those campsites. Those sites are, st are still available, excuse me. Uh, especially our sessions five and six, uh, you can see we've got a lot of availability later in the season, um, closer into that first week of August and second week of August, uh, great opportunities to still get to summer camp. And our session one still ha does have um, room and capacity. Sessions two, three, and four are actually starting to get full, uh, but there is still a little bit of room in session four. Sessions two and three are completely full at this time uh, from a scheduling perspective, but that, that does give you some insight into who's already coming to camp. Um, and I know a lot of the troops keep coming back year after year once we have them come. James has got his hand up. I've got a quick, quick Aaron, James Pike from Troop 11 in Rome. Yeah. Um, we've been coming since 2016 to Massa Weeping. A um, couple fifth year bark eaters. We've done Mountain Fox. I've had people on staff prior years and this year. If anybody in leather stocking wants to reach out and ask me questions, feel free. But my question is on the registration. Um, you mentioned the roster now. We've always had where when we entered the roster, it bombed out when we tried to input a scout ID number. Um, is it going to, because it always was edit checking against Seneca Waterways roster numbers. Is it going to change now with that? I believe I have it set up where it'll allow you to put that in. Um, it, we'll, we'll have to double check it. Um, I do apologize if it does bomb out on you. I know it's one of those fun fun far, parts of having it be council specific on the back end of things. Um, so I'm not sure if that'll work for you this year or not, James. Um, okay. I also don't know if that was, because I know we had register like uh, roster registration issues last year because of the redistrict districting process and everything too okay. that may have been the source okay look forward to being back again this year yeah it's good to have you back any That's other raised hand oh. oh yeah david but, um sorry to monopolize things but uh, is um with the uh, the first year camper program, is that a full day thing or can they still take merit badges as well? Um, so it takes up, up about half of their merit badge time. Um, so it's, um, I think actually this year we're gonna shorten it even a little bit more and it's gonna be one hour and a half slot. Um, mm -hmm. Our merit badge uh, schedule is basically organized into six 45 minute slots, but some classes are an hour and a half. 
Um, so those will take up. So it'll basically takes up two of those 45s and then they get the four others to do whatever they'd like. Okay, great, thank you. Yep, no problem. Anything else for us? Uh, we do have updated facilities. Um, you know, dining hall is a great place to eat meals. If your troop would prefer to uh, do patrol method cooking, we do have that option as well. So if you're, you're a troop that would prefer to cook your own meals in your campsite, we can make that work for you. Uh, we also do have a small trading post available for lots of uh, your mass sweeping needs when your scouts come up. And of course, the opportunity for candy and ice cream, uh, or at least the slushies is always there. And uh, our, our Facilities have been very well maintained and kept by our ranger staff. We do have a great, uh, great, you know, facilities for showers, for uh, bathrooms uh, where, where you go in, it's very state park feel, uh, go in, close the door, have the space to yourself and not have to worry about people coming in and out. Um, and there's one on, on both sides of the property that makes that available for everybody. Uh, so there is no excuse for your scouts to uh, not get in and get a shower during the summer uh, week there with us at camp. And there's one that's just for leaders and staff, um, as I'm yeah. sure it will uh, may impact you guys' thoughts. We, we, we do have a, a, a wash area as well. If your scout needs to do some laundry while they're there, we have a, a, a bay of uh, washers and dryers that are near the staff uh, area that are accessible for uh, leaders to utilize as well. So, yeah. And there's actually, there's a, a set of a washer and dryer in each of the shower houses as well. Well, uh, with that, if there's no other questions, we do appreciate your time and hope uh, hope we get a chance to, to serve your scout troop this summer. If you haven't already uh, selected a summer camp, we'd love to be that camp that you come to. If you have questions, I put the uh, email address uh, camping at SenecaWaterways.org in the chat. Uh, my information was shared already through the uh, email that went out uh, with this, Aaron.VicMeyer at scouting.org. Feel free to reach out to myself. Uh, Don or, or Matt, all of our information is up on the, uh, the webpage under Mass Weekly Scout Camps. So we're happy to help. Uh, as I indicated before, if your troop is looking for a presentation, if the scouts themselves would like to kind of learn a little bit more about camp, um, one or all of us might be available to come be a part of a Zoom meeting. Uh, just let us know. We'd be happy to come and do that. Um, thank you all for taking the time. And I will post this uh, Zoom uh, video to our YouTube channel and share it with Tom so it can be shared with others that weren't able to join us tonight. So thank you and have a great night. Thank you. It was good. Thank you. Thanks.